Hey, let's take a quick trip to the downtown of Todos Santos, where we're going to rip most of this up, redo the road network, place a bunch of buildings, and make a sparkling brand new interchange. Our current entrance to the downtown is a little dated at this point. It's also not very efficient, and I mean, I mean it looks okay, but I think we can do better. The first order of business is to add a system of frontage roads that cuts through the interchange. Sometimes you'll see this with a big stack interchange. There will basically be a city block of roads running right through the middle, so it can kind of function both as a service interchange and as a junction between two highways, which is basically what we need here, so we're going to add that. One of the roads is running east to west here, and then we're going to add another one running north to south. We already have a north to south one on the other side and an east to west one on the other side, so we just need to add these two. Now, what's probably the biggest problem with this interchange is that it only has two ways to turn left. So obviously for a big stack interchange, you need four. So we're gonna add two of these. One of them's going to be a nice sweeping ramp that goes and passes underneath the main length of the freeway that passes into downtown. This probably ends up being, I think, the best part of the interchange. It just looks really nice and adds a nice silhouette to it when you look at it from above. And then the other one is going to be just your pretty standard cloverleaf ramp. Not a lot of people are going to be needing to turn left here, so I'm not too worried about having a high capacity ramp here like we do for the other left turns. Now, of course, all these new lanes and entrances into downtown is going to bring with it a lot of traffic. So we're going to take this frontage road and route it next to the main avenue, turning it into a one-way street to try to keep the traffic uh, to go as long as possible before it wants to turn onto the main avenue, which can uh, cause a lot of congestion. I spent a good hour, probably, detailing up this interchange, adding back in the radio tower that I had to delete to make the interchange in the first place, uh, filling in some of these gaps with retaining walls, adding some lovely round custom pillars, uh, of course, doing some IMT work, adding highway signs, all the stuff you might expect. I also felt like this place wasn't feeling quite urban enough quite dense enough, so I added some buildings into these little awkward gaps that we have next to the interchange. And of course, after doing all this work that I was very proud of, I went to save the game, and it broke. I couldn't interact with anything, use Move It or any mods, or run the simulation or anything like that, so I quit the game. And I came back later and redid all the interchange details. It went a lot better and faster the second time, and I actually managed to save the game afterwards, which is always nice. Fixing the rest of the road network was a little more straightforward than the interchange, really just connecting up loose ends, uh, making more logical blocks than I originally had done, and just generally going with the irregular grid style that we've been using throughout the rest of the city. One major change that I made here on the southern end of downtown is I implemented a one-way system, at least for the main avenue. So instead of having one two-way road that runs right through the heart of the southern part of downtown, I made two one-way roads that diverge, and then connect back into a two-way road on either side. The next step, and by far the most important and time-consuming one, is to actually put down some buildings and detail them. I moved around some of the iconic skyscrapers that make up the skyline of Todos Santos and arranged them along the main avenue because previously they had been pushed back a block or two and I didn't think that really looked right. I also needed to shrink some of these bulkier and taller buildings with PO, and that'll serve to even out the skyline and make this place feel a little bit more dense overall, instead of having this uh, giant fortress of buildings sticking up in the center of the city. And once I had rearranged all our iconic skyline assets, we have to come in and add some new ones just to fill in all this space, because previously there really hadn't been that many buildings uh, cramped along the road here, and I wanted to have this be a fairly dense place. Of course, this is the perfect opportunity to put down down a bunch of the new Latin American assets that have been posted on the workshop since I originally did this build, I think like three years ago. I tried to locate the tallest buildings in my collection that I wanted to use for downtown. I created a tag system for that in the Find It mod, and then arranged them in such a way that we get uh, something resembling a nice skyline. Now, one problem with doing it this way is that we end up with a bunch of POs and unique buildings that aren't really contributing to the economy of the city. So we need to come in and use these office, commercial, and residential blocks to boost up the population that is a living, working, and shopping in downtown. I tried to approximate about how many people would be living and working in each building, and I also tried to implement mixed zoning so that we have some residential blocks and commercial blocks occupying the same buildings. And now that I had the main complement of iconic buildings laid out, I realized that our blocks needed to be quite a bit smaller. So we're gonna come in and add some more roads, pretty much just breaking each of these city blocks into either halves or quarters, depending on its original size. Doing that made it a lot easier to, to have a sensible path of development once we got to putting down all the filler buildings. 
That task involved finding buildings that fit into certain spaces, so we have corner buildings, angled buildings, etc., and basically just using move it to fit them right into place, squeezing them right up against the road so our sidewalks aren't unrealistically wide. Occasionally, I had to do a little bit of PO work just to get these things to fit in correctly, either up against the metro or at some of these more strangely angled roads. Now, I mostly tried to go for on-street parking or centralized parking, such as a parking garage or underground parking garage, but there were a few more interesting parking lots that I made as I went around detailing all the buildings I just popped down. One of them involves a couple of murals. Another one is an underground parking garage made up of a building flipped 90 degrees. Uh, but those are the main ones that we have time for right now. So with all those features done, we just had a few plain walls and areas of ground that I wanted to fill in. So we have some advertising, some murals, planters, uh, some small seating areas, a giant logo atop the tallest building of the skyline. And then there's this uh, nice plaza made with these Ipanema sidewalk decals by Ronix, and a whole lot of trees and planters. So with the central portion of downtown all finished, we have a couple other districts to take care of. So let's start with the southern part of downtown. If you'll remember, that's the place with the two one-way roads. Uh, previously, there really hadn't been that much going on here. So I came up with the idea that this was uh, sort of the original central business district of Toto Santos. So the buildings are a little bit older. It's packed a bit more tightly. There's less parking overall. And that just allows us to get some contrast in between these various districts of downtown. Uh, because this area is supposed to be a little bit older, I tried to go with a more weathered look for all the plazas, parking, infrastructure, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, without sacrificing too much uh, niceness, I still want this to be a nice area of the city. I tried to add a few iconic locations, like this really nice school building, and this theater. I tried to give these sorts of areas uh, the right amount of detailing, so they got a little bit more TLC than the rest of this district. Now moving over to the eastern end of downtown, we have a bit more of an industrial area, but it's currently in the process of being encroached on by the more modern commercial and residential and office development of downtown. So to represent that, we have a couple of builds. There's this pair of residential high-rises centered around a strip mall, and then there's a fancy and well-protected embassy for some unknown country. Let me know which country you think that embassy might be for. It has several secured entrances, a nice landscaped area for various meetings, I suppose, and some nice little details here and there. I took inspiration for this build from the United States Embassy in La Paz, Bolivia. The next build is inspired by Asuncion, Paraguay. This is the city center building by Watermelon, and I decided to take inspiration from a park near the real building in Asuncio. It's uh, basically raised up on some brick retaining walls, so I used brick wall networks, uh, ploppable grass, uh, some invisible paths, and a whole lot of trees to make this park come to life. Uh, the north side of downtown needed quite a bit less work. I just wanted to make it a little bit more dense and also update our downtown mall a little bit with a new parking garage. And then there's another park. Uh, this one is essentially a miniaturized version of Independence Park in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Although, of course, it's not nearly as grand. It's just meant to be a sort of a reference to it and not a direct build. Now, the last thing on the northern side of town once we're done with this park is going to be the city's main bus station. Now, I had a very awkward spot of land available for this, and I randomly stumbled across a bus station that takes up a more or less identical shape of land in the Netherlands. So I based this build off of the uh, bus portion of the central station in Tilburg. It serves five bus lines, the Downtown Avenue line, the Downtown Loop, the Hospital line, the Express line to the island, and a residential line that runs off to the east. I used these glass props to make the shelter, flipped them upside down with PO because I thought that looked a little bit cooler and more modern, and also stretched them out to make them a little bit more substantial so they can actually cover people who are waiting here for the buses. And then I added some uh, red sidewalk decals just to make this place pop a little bit extra, and then added a whole bunch of foliage to make it more pleasant to wait here, and some signs, ticket machines, benches, and all that that you would expect from a transit station. Of course, it's fairly isolated from pedestrians over here on one side of a very large avenue, so I added a pedestrian crossing. I'm using this pack of Korean crossing props. I think they fit nicely enough here. And I'm adding an invisible pedestrian path so that people can actually use it. And as I was working on this, I thought our main avenue looked a little bit bare. So we're going to go through and add a whole bunch of our usual palette of Toto Santos uh, landscaping trees. So we're done with the eastern side of town, and there's just one more thing to do before we're done. Over on the western side of town, we have this roundabout, which we're going to give a nice facelift. 
I finally get a chance to use these roundabout roads as an actual roundabout. Previously, I've just been using them as like generic roads, uh, but they work really well for this sort of build where you have a bunch of segments and nodes squished very closely together like this. Because this is the first thing people will see when they drive into the downtown from the freeway on this side of downtown at least, I wanted to make something sort of interesting. So we have a bit of a sculpture representing the skyline of Todos Santos in the center of the roundabout. Now that's all we have time for in this video. Obviously, this is a highly abridged version of the full build, but if you'd like to see the full no commentary three hour long time lapse, there's a link down in the description just for you. All right, let me know what you thought of this uh, remodel of downtown. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.